Americans are struggling right now. The price of gas, food, and other everyday goods are up. Inflation is top of mind in most American households, with more than 9 in 10 families telling CBS News that rising prices have posed a financial hardship or inconvenience. The uncertainty is impacting Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average hit a 52-week low, a session low as the markets close. The question is, have we bottomed out? Joining us now, CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger, the host of the podcast Jill on the Money. Jill is also the author of the Dumb Things Smart People Do With Their Money book. <laughs> Thanks for talking with us this morning, Jill. Great to be with you. Now, if this consumer price index does come in lower at 8.1% last month compared to last month's 8.5%, a 40-year high, has inflation actually peaked? What are you thinking about this? Uh, I, I'm not sure it has or it hasn't. I don't think it actually matters too much right now. Uh, prices will still feel like they are really high, and an 8%, even a 7.5% print is not going to make anyone feel a lot better. Uh, the good news would be that if we started to see that the pace of the increase was starting to come down, that would be a good sign for the Federal Reserve to keep plowing ahead, raising interest rates. And also that maybe, just maybe, we will have seen the worst. But again, this is going to be a year and a half project for the Fed to get inflation under control. When we came into COVID, inflation was running below 2%. And the Fed thought that was a problem because wages weren't rising fast enough. And now we've got the opposite problem, obviously. Well, you mentioned the Fed. If the numbers do show some slight easing today, is it too early to attribute it to the first hike of interest rates? Uh, well, you know, we've had two hikes. We had a quarter point and a half point. Um, part of the easing of inflation has to do with the Fed and its desire to move things forward in terms of rates. Part of it has to do with us, frankly, because if prices are so high in all different areas of our lives, consumers and businesses are going to start tightening their belts. And that action can also help bring down the pace of inflation. So if all of a sudden you're faced with a choice like, hey, you know, I was going to take a two week vacation in August. Let me make it 10 days because it'll be a little cheaper that way on the family budget. That in and of itself can be a way to ease inflation. So our behavior matters. And you mentioned the, the Fed plan is, you know, multi-year. When are we going to see the impact of it at, you know, the pump? And the grocery store, when, when are you forecasting that? Well, that's harder because food and energy are really subject to the whims of the supply chain. So remember what the, there's two sides of the economy. There's the supply side and there's the demand side. The Fed's trying to tamp down demand. Demand soared after COVID. You know, we were all stuck in our homes for a long time. We unleashed our buying power. Savings rates moved to all time highs and Americans spent. But on the supply side, we are really subject to what's going on in the world. So the supply chain was starting to show signs of easing. Then we have the war in Ukraine, really changed the dynamics of the oil market and the food market. So what you're going to see is when the government releases its numbers for the consumer price index, they will do so in two ways. They'll say, here's the broad rate. That was the 8.5% last month. Then they do a rate called the core rate, and it strips out food and energy. And the reason they do that is because those are two parts of the uh, supply side that the Fed doesn't have as much control over. I don't think that those prices are going to ease up anytime soon. So it's going to be really incumbent on people, or individuals, to figure out, all right, I know I have to drive to work. I know I've got to feed my family. What else can give? And those other things are going to be where people start to pull back some. And Joe, there's a lot of uncertainty right now in the markets. And we had a viewer sending this, this question. He says, Dear Jill Schlesinger, I'm 78 years old with a moderately conservative portfolio of investments. Now, recently, the value has dropped between 9 and 10 percent. I've been thinking about pulling roughly half of it out and putting it in cash until the market settles down. What would you hmm. advise? Did you get happen to capture my face going like with the, the pained look? Uh, <laughs> listen, Mrs. Mrs. Schlesinger called me with the same question, also known as my mother. And she's like, I'm very worried about the market. And I'm like, mom, listen, you're a long-term investor, even though you're in your 80s. And the reason is that what I think people need to understand is, yes, the market is turning over this year, but we had three fantastic years leading up to this year. I think the real issue is not so much your age, but when you need your money. If you need money, if, if our, our viewer who is 78 years old needs some of the money from the portfolio within the next year, maybe two years, you should sell enough to give you comfort that you can get the money out of the portfolio without subjecting yourself to risk. Now, 
if the 78 year old is really not needing any of the money or is really kind of investing for kids and grandkids, then leave it alone. The reality is that unless you need your money in the near term, one or two years from now, a tuition check, a home down payment, you've got to pull money out of your account to supplement your social security. Unless that's the situation, then hopefully you don't have a portfolio that is piled on, you know, 100% in Bitcoin. You want to make sure you have a portfolio that's risk is consistent with who you are, the need for your money and your time horizon. Well, we had a lot of great questions. That's all the time we have for them. CBS News analyst Joe Schlesinger, thanks for your insight this morning and thanks for joining us. Great to be with you. Thanks a lot.